because athletes start with such high level of balance, usually above the general population studies, they have to be really impaired to show up on a static test. Now, on the cobalt test, 100% of healthy athletes can do the test and they do it with a very low error rate. So we had just under 600 athletes from age 10 to 25. Uh, when we were looking at what does the cobalt do and how do athletes do on it, 100% of them can do it. I only have norms for age 10. I can tell you I've done it as young as seven. They don't do it well, but they can do it. That's the key is they can do it. Now in the 10 to 25 year old, across all age groups, all they could over 90% could do it without committing more than one error. So it has a very low error rate. So if somebody biffs, more than once or meets error criteria more than once, you already know that's extraordinary. And that sounds funny. And I write it up like that. And I will educate my athletes that that's extraordinary because particularly in the, once you get to 16 and 18, it's 90, the, in the 19 to 25 year old group, I think it was a hundred percent could do the concussion, could do the test without com, uh, committing more than one error. Well, so if you come to me as an injured athlete, if you can't do the test, I already know there's a problem. And in our post-injury study that we did for JN, that we um, submitted to JNPT, 45% of the concussed athletes couldn't do it on the first try. Of the rest that could, the, the vast majority had more than two, more than one, they had two or more errors. Of the ones that were able to muscle through it and commit only one error, their sway scores were much larger. So outside the, we give them 25th percentile is our lowest edge of passing is what we tend to use. So anyway, so what we liked about it is the, our idea around here, we tossed around the phrase difficult, but doable. And I say <laughs> that because it is hard. And I just thought, so these athletic trainers that I was teaching a couple years, uh, a couple weeks ago with, with Jamie, um, the ones I make them do it. And, and they were like, oh my God, this is really hard. I go, yeah, but you're doing it. And that's the key is they're doing it. And you know, it's not easy, but, but that's the thing that will tease out among athletes. And the thing is, as a healthy athlete, there's gonna be some variation in execution but an injured athlete that's not got really good kinesthetic aware, like if they're way off angle, if they think a line looks like this instead of this for head turning, you know, those sorts of things, those execution errors, it just really, for me, is a highly useful tool. I have tested healthy athletes or uninjured athletes up through the age of 60, or I'm sorry, 68 eight is I think the oldest athlete that I ever did. And he was Tai Chi in a marathon and he was still a runner. Um, and so that was his fitness was Tai Chi and, and uh, running. And so he could do it as well. Did he do it as well as the 25 year old? No, but he could do it. So. Right. Yeah, right. And, you know, prior to cobalt um, in 19, well, the research was published. So the work was being done before then, but uh, Kevin Guskowitz and colleagues mm -hmm. um, certainly taking the lead um, in concussion management through the NA, the NATA National mm -hmm. Athletic Trainers Association and came out with the best test, which mm -hmm. is widely used among athletic trainers and is difficult, but doable. Mm -hmm. um, for those, however, that also are really doing the bombs, you know, that, that research showed that the best wasn't as sensitive post-concussion. And so what I think it just, the difference that it comes down to is really the head movement. It is. And it's, the both feet on the ground. It's both feet on the ground, head movement, eyes closed and doing the motion sensitivity. And I think, you know, the best really opened up our eyes about the modified cat sib not being enough, mm -hmm. um, a difficult but doable test. But by the cobalt adding the head shake, the higher demand vestibular and the motion sensitivity, I think, you know, I, I would love to see at a minimum, people doing the VOMS and the uh, modified cobalt mm -hmm. together. And um, for those of you who may not know, the modified cobalt is the non-instrumented version. When you, you know, not everyone can afford force plate technology or computerized <laughs> testing. So you can set up um, the modified cobalt. And mm -hmm. just like Amy has continued to say, 
at least pick up on error rate. Um, the other thing I want people to know, uh, Amy, is y'all have also collected quite a bit of data on older adults too, mm -hmm. is correct? Mm -hmm. And what you find, what were the ages and kind of what did you find there? That they can, they can still do it and they still have, I can, so there's a group of men that I get to test every year. I don't get to talk about their data very, but, but just know that up through the mid sixties, um, they can all still do the test. There's one that is consistently two errors every time, but because I'm baseline preseason baseline testing him, I know that he's going to commit that many errors. So if he were to get a concussion and come in and see me and he says he's fine, but he has that many errors and he looks the same, that's how I know he's okay. But if he had a lot more, so I haven't had, I haven't collected, I don't have an end size in older athletes enough to say this is what older athletes do in terms of sway and error. I can tell you anecdotally because of the size. That's what I usually say is because of the end size, it's not very, um, but it's doable. Yeah. And you know, in our patient population, 62% are over the age of 65 mm -hmm. and we use the cobalt um, regardless if, if modified catsib isn't sensitive enough, we use the cobalt in all of our patients, regardless if it's concussion or, or not, mm -hmm. which alludes to what you're saying is think of it not just as a concussion test, but as a high level balance test.